Hey, Mike Lake here with altobone.com, and today I want to talk about rhythm. <laughs> How's that for timing? Uh, heavy metal. So it's glass. Well, it doesn't really matter what style you play, whether it's rock or classical or jazz. Um, rhythm is the glue that really holds the music together, right? Or as Whitten Marcellus once said, the heart of music is its rhythm. Now, before I dive into this, I want to tell you that I'm including an Easter egg within this video for a free book of your choosing. So keep an eye out, keep an ear out. Now, speaking of my books, I'm writing a book right now that I'm calling Rhythm Savvy. And I was originally calling it Time and Rhythm Savvy because I wanted to emphasize the element of having good time, not just the skill of playing rhythmically accurate, right? But in the end, I guess I realized there are kind of two aspects of the same thing, so it's called Rhythm Savvy. And I think the book and the topic is important because I think that a solid sense of rhythm and time is critical to being a good musician. I mean, there are great jazz players who don't have the greatest classic technique. They, some don't have the greatest sense of intonation, maybe not you know, great range, but I can't think of a, a single great jazz player or any accomplished musician who doesn't have great time. So I want to use this video as an introduction to the three main concepts I'm presenting in the book. Basically, I'm breaking down rhythm into three areas. First, metronomic rhythm, which is basically the, the ability to play with a steady time, you know, playing accurately with a metronome, right? I'm going to share a couple of exercises I've developed within the book for you to measure that ability and to strengthen it. Second is what I'm calling groove rhythm. And this is, this is metronomic rhythm and making it feel like music, right? It's like what I played at the beginning of this video, uh, the song That Dare. The idea is that the emphasis you place on certain notes is what creates the groove or the style or the feel. And that emphasis is what distinguishes, you know, like a, a foot tapping sequence of notes from a machine gun stream of notes, right? And third is what I'm calling phrase rhythm. Because all good music is comprised of a sequence of musical phrases. The, those phrases can be based on rhythm, dynamic, harmony, uh, but an understanding of this is critical to an improvising musician because the rhythm of phrases is what gives you solo structure. You know, it kind of takes the audience on a journey. You're, you're so, it, it, it allows the solo to breathe, right? It provides form. It tells a story to the listener that they can follow. And even for music composed by somebody like this. Ah, you know who that is? The first person to correctly give me his or her name in a comment and email me their address will get a free book of your choosing. Uh, your, your email, not, not the artist. Um, and if you write an insightful enough comment about this person's music, even after the first comment, you know, giving me the name, I may give out more books after the initial one. You can tell I'm hungry for, for, for comments. Um, so. This is just a brief introduction of those three concepts, but, so I want to take a quick look at each one. Let's start with metronomic rhythm. It's the simplest of all the concepts, by far. It's simply the ability to keep time in your head without having to rely on an external source, which could be the drummer or, or someone else that you play with. So try this. I've written a post in my blog that goes with this video. So. Just go to alterbone.com, go to my blog, and search for the post called Rhythm Savvy for Video. Within that post are two sound files. The first one is a click at 110 BPM. And the way it's structured is after four bars of click, the click goes away for two bars and then comes back. And your challenge is to play uh, eight notes or whatever, but let's start with eight notes, with the first four bars and keep playing those eight notes after the click disappears. And then see if you're in time when the click comes back. Right, sounds easy. Um, let me try. One, two, three, four. Okay, 
pretty good, right? I, I came back in the second uh, in the second click, uh, the second section, and I was pretty well in tune. Now, the second file is slower, which is harder. It's 90 BPM. And this time, after two bars of click, there's three bars of silence before the click returns, right? That's, like I said, that's going to be much harder. You've got more time, and it's a slower click. So let's, uh, let's try that. One, two, three, four. Okay, I think it was pretty good. So you can try this first with, you know, a, 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 a single note like I just did, and then you can try it with a scale, or better yet, you know, an improvised line. Now, here's another exercise, but you have to have a, a friend help you with this, and you have to record it, right, for it to work. Um, what you do is you're going to hit record and start the metronome, and you're going to play a few bars of notes with the metronome, and then have your friend stop the metronome. But you keep playing for a while, you know, trying to keep that time like we just did. When you finish, then play the recording synced to the live metronome. And it'll take a little bit to get them together sync. Obviously, you got the same tempo. Now, sync it well so that you can tell how long you kept the tempo and whether you drifted, you know, fast or slow and at what point that happened. Obviously, you want to go as long as you can before it starts to drift. Now, one last point. Does playing perfectly in time with a metronome make you a great player? Well, absolutely not. But it does provide um, a solid foundation for you to uh, command a more musical flow to your playing, whether that's for classical or jazz or whatever style. Okay, I just needed to add that in there. Um, so that's metronomic rhythm. The second category that I mentioned earlier uh, is groove rhythm. With groove rhythm, we still want to keep an accurate clock, but now we want to add a musical feel to our tempo, right? So we could play that dare which is the tune I played in the very beginning of the, of the video. You can play it like this. Which is straight. Now we could add some emphasis. We start to swing a little bit. We add emphasis on some of the notes. So these sound like this. Which is better, right? Um, we could emphasize more to getting closer to kind of my style and how I played it in the very beginning. All right, so you can kind of see I'm ghosting some notes, right? But, you know, your personal style in creating a groove is going to be unique, right? So it, it's, it's your own. But the style is very much dependent on where you place the dynamic emphasis and where in time you place each of your notes, right? So, for example, the placement of notes relative to the metronome between, let's say, Basie and John Philip Sousa is very different. Or from Sinatra and Pavarotti. Uh, or from Bird and David Sanborn. All right, so for this, your exercise. Record yourself playing a simple scale phrase like I just did and listen for the time and for the note emphasis that kind of, you know, defines your personal groove rhythm, as I'm calling this. And if you come away thinking, yeah, I don't really have a groove to my playing, find a player that you really like on any instrument, by the way. It doesn't have to be trombone if you're a trombone player. And transcribe their solos and play along with the recording and play the solo with just the rhythm section and record yourself and start to hear if you're developing kind of a personality or a style or a groove you're playing. And this is not something that simply happens because you watch the video, right? Um, your unique style and approach to the rhythm of your notes takes years to develop, right? But at least being aware of that right now um, will help your playing down the road. Now, I'm creating some interesting exercises in the book that'll get you moving in the right direction, um, literally. 
The third category is what I'm calling phrase rhythm. And that relates to music at a much higher perspective, right? I'm using that term to identify the rhythm of phrases that make up a piece of music. Now, one way to look at phrase rhythm is to look at it from the, as the form of a piece of music. So, when you play a piece of classical music and you're aware of how the musical phrases build on each, on each other with, you know, dynamics and tempo, you're more likely to play the piece at a more musically satisfying level. Now, as a jazz player or an improviser, I think your ability to spontaneously compose for like 32 or 64 bars or whatever length of music you're improvising over determines a large part of the quality of your solo, right? Uh, in other words, the rhythm or pace of your phrases as your solo progresses. So let's, let's look at this idea of phrases and, and let's use Miles' solo on So What from the Kind of Blue album. And I created kind of a graphic illustration of the first chorus of his solo. It's like a phrase rhythm transcription. Each line represents four bars of the total 32-bar form of Miles' first chorus. Now, in order to distinguish Miles' phrases, what I've done is I've color-coded them, alternating red and blue. So the first phrase is blue, the second is red, and so on throughout the solo. Now, it's a little, well, maybe a lot, <laughs> misleading since really the genius of Miles was that each of his phrases related musically to the previous phrase and to the next phrase. You know, they combine to make a complete musical statement. So forgive me for separating them kind of artificially for, you know, illustrating the rhythm of his phrases. Now, notice that the phrase lengths are varied throughout. It's like when you tell someone a story, right? Your sentences are not identical lengths and emphasis. And if you tell it well, you're leading your, lit your, your listener to a specific place. There's intent. So here might be a graphic illustration of a less experienced player. Now, the first thing to notice is that there are very few breaks, which tells us that there's probably not much of a story being told. It, it kind of looks like uh, it's simply the running up and down a scale. Now, there's a limit to what can be interpreted in something like this, no doubt. But if you hear yourself simply running notes throughout the length of your solo, kind of like a, a long run on sentence, then think about Miles' solo as inspiration. And here it is again for comparison. And again, listen to this solo to really hear what Miles is doing with the rhythm of his phrases. So let me give you an exercise to help you develop your phrase rhythm. Here's an eight-bar uh, backing track. Now, first, listen to it so you hear the harmonic form. And by the way, this track is also on the post, uh, my blog that I mentioned earlier, so that you can try this yourself. And start by giving yourself some parameters. Like, let, let's say, play only two four-bar phrases, and then give yourself the goal of ending on one of the ninth bar, right? So two four-bar phrases ending on the one of the ninth bar. And this is kind of training to help you deliberately create phrases and to aim for an end rather than just stopping because the rhythm section stops, right? Call it deliberate phrase construction. So let me show you. Let me try this. Okay. Now, so go to my post and play with this track and try for, you know, doing it yourself and try varying the lengths of phrases. So, like, play four two-bar phrases and still end for that deliberate end on bar nine, like this. Okay. All right. Wow. That was a long video, but 
I hope that it sparks your interest into, um, you know, these rhythm concepts and, and that it motivates you to help w- to work on them. Because having a better sense of time will definitely make you a better player, and I think you'll be more satisfied as an improviser. Um, and yes, get my book when it comes out because I'm going to have all these concepts plus tons more. And if you subscribe to my free music feed at altobone.com, you'll be first in the know, and I'm sure I'll be offering some sort of discount offer. So let me know your thoughts on this and suggestions on how I can help you more with your sense of time, and have fun with this. Okay.